Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. Hello, my friends. This is Angie Stewart from Mia Inner Light, live in Kardec Radio. Right now, we are on Facebook, but also on YouTube, in Kardec Radio app. We are everywhere. So if you are seeing us live, welcome, welcome. If you are listening to us, it's a pleasure to be here talking to you. And if you will be listening the recorded version, you will be benefiting from it anyway so today is thursday the 17th let me just open the comments window so i can say hi to anyone that uh, post comments here so if you are new to the program we studied two books we studied this book the gospel according to no sorry <laughs> among brothers of other lands the first book and the gospel the gospel according to spiritism is the second book but we are almost finishing so today is the chapter before the last so next week will be the last chapter of this book and we will be starting a new book the new book will be this one this one is can you see oh, the light is bad but i think like this you can see what is spiritism so this book is a wonderful book to people that do not know spiritism they never heard about but it's also good for people who already follow the spiritist philosophy and would like to know more details this book kardec wrote right after the spirits book and uh, so in this book, he has conversations with uh, lots of different people. He talks to a priest, he, he talks to believers and disbelievers. And then he's able to address their issues, why they don't understand, why they don't, they don't want to be open to that philosophy in a, in a very positive way, really like a, a conversation. No one is attacking anything, and the Kardec was always extremely respectful, and he he could always separate the person from the issue. What most of us has a very difficult time to be able to do it because if someone is asking you something in a not very nice way, immediately you are angry with that person. Doesn't matter if it's because of uh, philosophy, religion, if because of politics, it's because of the soccer team. You get angry with the person, not with, with what the person is talking. And uh, so this is an admiring virtue that uh, Kardec had. And he was always able to, to, re to deal with this in such a, a peaceful way. So this is like things for us to learn. So this book will be great. Another thing that I'm super excited is that uh, yesterday, late at night, I was able to give a name to our YouTube channel. Woo! So now we are finally Mia in the light in the YouTube channel. And this is wonderful because now people can just search and they will find us. So let's start, and I have a special guest. As uh, everything, every week, I have been bringing friends here that um, they stay with us and they do our final prayer. So today we have Emanuele with us. And uh, Hi, <laughs> hello, hello, Emanuele. Nice to have you here. Hello. I am just so like much. A, where is everybody? I hope uh, the sound is working because uh, like uh, two weeks ago, I had the problems with uh, with the sound. So I don't see any comments, but sometimes this is a little strange, but uh, I hope uh, everything is working. But uh, Emanuele, so we I don't even remember how long ago we met. I remember I remember meeting you a long time ago in Inner yeah. Enlightenment. I don't even know how many years ago. I but, know, actually. Uh, it was uh, in 2000, um, it was 2011, actually 2010. 
and I was pregnant. Yeah, I was pregnant with Valentina. Oh, yeah. I was uh, yes. seven months pregnant. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. Wow. Wow. So a few years a ago. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> My good skin, don't tell my age. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me. <laughs> yes, my God, 10 years ago. This is amazing. Yeah. This is amazing. <laughs> but I'm so happy that you now are a Floridian. This is yes. exciting. <laughs> Very another, proud to be one. <laughs> another person that I didn't even need to convince, just decided to come. And I'm like, yay. Right. <laughs> I was guided to come here. <laughs> yes, yes. My mediumship was like telling you, yeah. oh, don't come to Florida. <laughs> Very good. I'm Thanks happy. You. you will love Florida. It's a little bit hot, but don't worry. You will get used to it. And there is much more, more pros than cons. <laughs> I believe so. Yeah. 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 And you have kids, you know, yes. when, yes. when you have kids, you will have more space. And you have the whole year to be able to benefit from very nice weather. And you can always go to New York on vacation. That's what I do. Like, hey. But I don't think my children want to go back to New York anytime soon. So <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, 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 now it's uh, tough. This, this, um, this year of 2020, it's, it's a very challenging year to all yeah. of us everywhere. New York was really terrible, terrible, terrible with COVID. And now Florida is really terrible, terrible, yeah. terrible with COVID. So it's, it's, a, it's very hard to, to everybody. And we have yeah. to be calm. We have to be praying that the things will get better. People will be respecting more because people... They just think I'm never going to get sick. So I'm just going to mm -hmm. party, party, party. But then, you know, they can get other people sick, older people sick. And uh, mm -hmm. and this can be bad to all of us. But yeah, we have to be cautious now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So welcome. Welcome to Florida. Mm -hmm. Very happy to have you here with us. It's Thank you for having me here. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and let's see who is arriving here. Oh, we have good friends here. Hello, Matthew. How are you? Oh, you can hear me. Oh, thank you so much. I'm always worried about the the the, the issues with the sound. Hello, Nora. So, Teresa. Hello, Claudia. Very nice to have you all guys here. So, let's do our initial prayer so we can start our study. So if you are new to the channel, I always like to tell everybody to have a bottle of water or a glass of water because the spirits will actually energize this water and this water will be our medication through the week. So as I always do, when the water finish, do not allow the water totally to finish, replenish with water, then you can do a short prayer and it will be will still be your medication. And in the time of COVID, yes, we all need this type of medication until the science really discovers the correct medication for our bodies. So let's go. Everybody just relax. It's one minute of prayer and then we start the study. God, our mother and father, we are here together again with our friends incarnated and discarnated. And we would like to ask for your protection, your guidance, your inspiration. So the study of tonight will be very good. We will all benefit from it. And most of all, we will be able to put in practice everything we'll be reading and studying. Thank you so much, so be it. Very good. Thank you. Emanuele, I will see you in a few minutes so you can do our final prayer. See you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, my friends. So let's go. We are chapter 41. Chapter 41. There is only one more chapter to finish the book. Ah, I'm so excited. I love to finish books. I love to start books too, but to finish is even better. It's like a conqueror. So last week we studied obsession, tough 
tough, tough, tough subject. But uh, it's beautiful the way it was organized because, you know, last week was obsession. This week is to find God. And next week, the last one is family. So the way the spirits coordinate the work is, is perfect. It's perfect because they... For example, they spoke about obsession. That's a very tough subject to most of the people. And uh, some people got with that heavy sensation that, oh, my God, obsession. But then today they are going to help us to find God or to understand God or to believe God or to connect something with God because there are lots and lots of people that cannot uh, believe in God. They do not accept the existence of something bigger, something special. What is very hard for me, because for me, it's so natural. It's so automatic. I open my window. I see the trees. I see the sky. I see the sky so blue, the sun, yellow. And, the, and you know, you go out, you see the park with the beautiful flowers. I sent um, a video this week to, to some friends in, the, in WhatsApp. And, you know, in the past, I used to put everything on Facebook. But nowadays, Facebook is connected with YouTube. And if there is any type of soundtrack, they will block. And then they will block your profile. So it's tough. So you cannot send public things anymore. You have to be very careful. So I sent to my my friends, I sent to my WhatsApp group, and this video was absolutely beautiful. It's like a drone filming a field, a green field with these lilac flowers, these gorgeous flowers. So when I saw that the first time, I thought it was some kind of painting. But then when it, when it was filming closer and closer, you're like, oh. And then you go through all the beautiful things in nature, the lakes, the rivers, the waterfalls. It's just like, oh my God, this is really God. God did that because man, human being cannot do it. But we have to understand that we are all in different phases of the evolution. It's not because of our physical ages, but because our spiritual ages. There are spirits that are a little bit older, so they already understood certain things. And there are spirits that are a little bit younger or they are rebel. So they just, they are fighting for some things and they choose not to accept that yet. I'm not saying that every person that do not believe in God is fighting against it. Because there are other issues also, especially the ones connected with uh, previous reincarnations, that they had the issues with religion in past lives. So they reincarnate with an even bigger issue if they were not able to address when they were in spiritual realm. So right now for them, this is something that they don't want to talk about. But let's read the text. Let's try to digest it. It's very short. It's only two pages and when i finish reading then i will start commenting little by little but as soon as you start listening to whatever i'm going to talk if you want to write your comments or your questions please feel free to do it and when i finish we can uh, we can have like a a conversation so okay let's go uh, to find God. The spirit is Anderson and the medium was Valdo Vieira. Christian life hinges upon brotherly love. We may give expression to the best within us. The gospel teaches us that there may be always a new beginning every moment so as to gain Christ's presence. Patience is the power to bring to us the kingdom of happiness. Jesus knows our shortcomings and gives us his tolerance. Let us help each other. Live is, live is the law. No, live. Live is the law. We must be faithful in little promises 
Many people are completely involved with heavenly glories while they are careless in little things. Let us wake up. Devotion claims fulfillment. He who knows becomes responsible. The world needs help. Let us be our let let us be off service at every opportunity in the gospel as well as in business one must look ahead jesus said at not are not two parrots sold for a farthing farthing is like a small amount of money it's like ancient money and not one of them shall fall to the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. This always impressed me. We cannot measure God's glory around us, but we can recognize the divine attributes of God through our love to our fellow man. As far it goes, the definition of the New Testament, God is love, and he that abideth is love, abideth in God, and God abideth in him. Abideth is like it remains, so it would be uh, he that remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. So that would be like the translation. Carries with the promise that by living and practicing pure love, man will finally attain to the state of union with his maker forever. Would, uh, would we find God? Then we need to follow Jesus Christ. Service with him is the real easement of life's problems. Good things do not come to us by chance. The happiness and the peace in the soul's kingdom come from love's service. When he finds love in our heart, Jesus is there. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart, there will be your heart also. Jesus in Matthew 6, 21. This message was psychographic in uh, July 6, 1965 in New York City, United States. So, as all, all the messages in this uh, very short book, they are all very beautiful. And if you don't know, Among Brothers of Other Lands, this was a book that uh, Valdo Vieira and uh, Chico Xavier psychographic together when they were traveling in the United States, but also in Europe. And all the messages were for spiritists that were living abroad. Because as you all know, spiritism really, really flourished in Brazil. And then Brazilians start traveling everywhere. And lots of Brazilians are spiritists and they have this philosophy within them so wherever they go, they plant the seed. So these messages were to fortify these pioneers, to help them to, to remain strong and to understand that the things will be better. And the one important thing for all of us to know, we are never alone. So as I always say, if we have good thoughts, if we are practicing the goodness, if we are charitable, if we are trying to be good, I'm not saying we are good because we have good moments. It's different. We have a good moment here, a bad moment there, a good moment here, a bad moment there. So we have to try to have more bad moments and less bad moments. So more good than bad. <laughs> so we need to be cultivating the positive energy so we can actually connect with the good spirits, we can connect with our guardian angel, so we will be able to overcome our own difficulties. So let's go. So let's go. Anyone wrote anything here? So Saul, what Saul said? Saul said, 
uh, when we find love in our heart, Jesus is there. Exactly, that's that's the translation. Very good. And, and you believe it? It's difficult. A lot of people can't find it. A lot of people is seeking Jesus somewhere else. In their minds, they're thinking, when I buy that car, then I will be happy. When I get that house, then I will be happy. When I get the perfect job, then I will be happy. Then Jesus will be with me. And, and it's not like that. It's not like that. In the reality, when we help someone else, then we will be happy. And uh, most of us don't, don't realize it. Uh, I already mentioned here a few times that I started a, a very simple charitable project to the elderly in the nursing homes because of COVID. So I named this project Loving Mail for the Elderly. So I got a lot of volunteers and we are writing letters to the elderly in nursing homes. So this nursing home is the same one I did a um, Christmas show last year. We went there and we danced, we sang, we bought a, a quadrilha, a typical folk dance from Brazil. So it was a lot of fun. They really, really liked. So I contacted them and I mentioned that uh, we can't visit them. So maybe we could write and and the social worker was very, very helpful. She said, yes, they will be super excited. So we are writing to them. And why I'm talking about this? I'm talking about because I feel like a child. I wrote to two. We have 65 people writing. Oh, actually, now we have 67 people writing to them. So I wrote to two of them. And, uh, and I, I go to my mail every day and I'm expecting my letter. It's almost like a boyfriend, you know, when you're young. And in my time, because most of the people nowadays, they don't even write letters, they write emails. So you will be waiting for the, no, not even emails. I think nowadays it's text message. So no romance, it's a text message. In my time, there was a romance. So you wait for the mailman to stop by with the letter. So that's how I am with the letters for the elderly. And I received one here. Look at this. That's my letter. Whoop, whoop, whoop. That's my letter. You see? And I got so excited. It was almost like a gift when I got my letter and I saw that. Uh, look. <laughs> Hello, Angie. And they wrote, oh, it was so cute, so adorable. And um, it was for me, it was like a gift. I was so excited. I was so happy to receive this tiny little piece of paper because this piece of paper had such a love concentrated in it that you just feel it. But later on, talking to the social worker, because I, I speak to, with her once a week, she always gives me updates on the elderly and the situation there. And um, she is actually the person helping them to write. So it's not easy. She is one person writing 65 letters. You know, we, we are corresponding back and forth. So I'm answering this letter. She will have to, to go to that person and talk to the person, read the letter, and ask what the person wants to write, and she writes, because they are very weak. They are not the ones that are still strong, that they can write, they can, they can get out, no. But she mentioned that the, all of them, of course, some of them are really like, uh, she said that some of them, every nurse that goes in their bedroom, he gives the letter <laughs> and he said, can you read it for me? And then the nurse goes and reads. And then uh, he actually finished the letter. And the, one of the nurses said, you know the letter by memory? And he said, yes. And then she said, so why you ask me to read? Oh, because I love to hear what the person was telling me. And uh, she also said that some of them, the letters are like treasures. So when I heard this, I was just like, oh, Faber-Glassard, because uh, it's so simple. And uh, 
they feel so lonely. Some of them are so sick. Some of them have no family. Others, the family lives in different states. So they are extra lonely in, during COVID time. Imagine, we are in our homes. We are comfortable. We have, a, we have someone. We have a dog. We can walk on the streets. They are in total lockdown, lonely. And then when the surprise came, this unknown people start writing it was a gift so i talked about this because when you give love you receive so much love so whatever we do whatever we do from our heart the benefit will be much bigger than whatever we have done think about that so now that i spoke already for 20 minutes let's go <laughs> So it goes, um, Christian life hinges on, upon brotherly love. We may give expression to the best within us. So this is important. When, when we try to be good, we should try to give the best within us, you know? And the yes, maybe this is also a material thing. Because yes, you you are very friendly, so it's very easy to smile, to talk, blah, blah, blah. But sometimes, for example, people think charity is just the giving, like uh, use the things. No, this is not charity. You wanted actually to get rid of it. So instead of throwing out, uh, yeah, it's better to give to someone to be able to use. But the real charity is that uh, sneakers that tennis shoes that you absolutely love and you just bought and you see somebody in need and the size is the same size of yours if you are able to take that the sneakers and give to that person this is a much stronger proof of charity i'm not saying that the, the person donating used is not charitable because this was just an example but there are levels that are much much higher than others so this is the expression to give the best within us also in a materially speaking a material way of speaking so the god the gospel reaches us that there may be always a new beginning every moment so as gain Christ's presence. Patience is the power to bring to us the kingdom of happiness. Patience. I always say every day, I need more patience because patience is, a, is difficult. You know, everything is good, there no problems in your life, so it's easy. You are patient, you're calm, but in the moment something you want something to be done and that thing is not being done you get crazy that's me that's me so i need to exercise patience that probably that's why i got a teenager son that's extremely calm and extremely slow everything he does is super slow <laughs> so you can imagine i am super hyper i do everything fast quick i do 10 things at the same time and my son he does one and another one and another one <laughs> so it is hard but maybe that's why he's my son so he obligates me to exercise this virtue that's so difficult and we all need so Jesus knows our shortcomings and gives us his tolerance. Let us help each other. Live is the law. So this is beautiful. Jesus knows our shortcomings. So as I mentioned before, no one here is perfect. We all have issues. We all have problems. But thank God we are all different because if we all had the exactly same problem, that would be a problem but it's good we are very different i'm super happy hyper 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 then my husband is very calm relaxed and then it's wonderful because he was if if he was hyper like me we probably wouldn't be married any longer so differences are good so we must be faithful 
in the little promises. Many people are completely involved with heavenly glories while they, while they are careless in little things. So imagine a person that is very committed to the big things, but then forgets about the, the little things. Imagine, I don't know, imagine a, a speaker, a spiritist speaker that uh, is, is a very famous and talks to thousands of people and everybody's like, wow, wow, it's so beautiful. He says amazing things and whatever. But then when he's not in front of the, I don't know, the camera or the public, he does not do 10% of what he tells others to do. I'm not saying that uh, because he's a spiritual speaker, he has to be perfect because no one is perfect. But when we already reached a level that uh, you talk to others how to behave better, you are being an example. So when you are an example, you acquired more responsibility. So it's very important that you behave accordingly to what you do. Imagine me, I'm here telling, I'm no, no famous speaker. I, I don't talk to, to even 100 people. I don't even talk to 20, imagine. But imagine the, the 15 people that I talk to one day, they go somewhere and they meet me absolutely wasted, drunk, on the floor, vomiting. What is that? What is that? What happened? <laughs> that would be at least awkward. But uh, this is not the behavior expected. So imagine someone that's fighting alcoholism, is really trying to overcome this very difficult issue. And I am the person who was inspiring, helping, teaching, whatever. And then he meets me in that situation. That wouldn't be good. At least he would be saying, look who is trying to help me. Impossible. So we need to, we need to behave accordingly to what we want others to, to behave to. So if you are trying to do something good, you have to behave in that way. That's why uh, the text actually talks about it. Let me, let me read when, the, when the, the, the text talk about it. So let's continue here. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I always get lost. Okay. Let us wake up. Devotion claims fulfillment. He who knows becomes responsible. Ah, that's here. You see? He who knows becomes responsible. The world needs help. So he who knows becomes responsible. If you know more, you will be required, asked more. So one thing is the kindergarten student that he knows this. So if the, if the college, the university teacher meets the kindergarten student, he is not going to be teaching at that high level to the kindergarten because he can't absorb that. So he will bring his knowledge down and he will formulate his questions of his line of thoughts in a way that that kindergarten will be able to understand. But the difference is when you are already a college student, you have to behave and you will be asked as a college student. So the more you know, the more you be required. So that's what it said here. And we also know that when we are spiritists we know more than others because we have knowledge we have understanding of the life after death we have a full understanding of the law of action and reaction the consequences we know that if we do good something good will happen to us but if we do bad something bad will happen to us most of the time we are very lucky that God is extremely loving and if he forgives so many of our mistakes, that's why we don't go through so much pain. 
Many times when we're like, ah, oh, my life is miserable. I can't believe I suffer so much. But you impose 100 times more in other people. You are only being asked like this tiny little percentage. And even like that, you are complaining and you're not, you might not be able to fulfill it. So we have to, to think about that. And then let us be of service at every opportunity in the gospel as well as in the business. One must look ahead. So let's be of service. So let's always think about the others. You know, when we are working towards the others, imagine a mother. A mother has two, three, four, five kids to take care. So she is thinking about these children, a good mother. So she wants to provide, she wants to work, she will do anything to provide to these kids, to help these kids. The same thing with the, the animals, for example. The animals, they live through instinct and the instinct of protection in maternity is unbelievable. I received the video that's old already, but it's always very, impacting is in a farm and and then there is this this tiny bird with the, the 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 wings spread protecting her little egg so she's like this and then there is a huge tractor trailer huge coming towards her and the and the, and it's a huge machine you know that machines they they rotate like this because they cut everything from the floor like the soil and she is there she is expecting to die but in her little mind she's like i will protect my kids and it was so beautiful because she did not move and then the tractor she was here the tractor trailer is stopped really centimeters like inches close from her and then raised the machine raised went through and then lower again and then she looked back i was like her faith was unbelievable so it's like my goodness how many people would be able to do it how many people because she couldn't she couldn't fly with her eggs one thing is that if she could grab her babies and run away but she couldn't so she decided to stay and protect and i will die if necessary that was like impactating because there are human beings that do not act like uh, like animals unfortunately there are human beings that don't have this this sense of love uh, so strong so it's it's hard for us to see it but one day we will all be like this one day we will evolve in the sense to understand how the protection how much the love we need to give not just for our kids but to everyone that's what we say that one day we will understand that we are all brothers and sisters not just the blood ones, but all, all, my neighbor, my boss, my coworker, we are all brothers and sisters. And then we will be able to calm down a little bit more because you think like a neighbor, I forget about that one, don't wanna even talk to him, I ignore, I fight. But when you think, oh, if, if it was your brother, would you be acting like that? I'm sure a lot of people think, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you think better usually you would calm down or maybe your mother and father would come and talk to you and say you know he's problematic but he needs your help he needs your love be patient and then we probably would calm down and we would uh, uh, end up making some kind of amendments but because the neighbor don't have a mother that will touch our hearts, we kind of treat in this way. But one day we will be able to overcome these differences and treat everyone as our brothers and sisters. So let's go. Jesus said, 
are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and not one of them shall fall to the ground without your father knowing it. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. I remember the first time I, I heard of it, I was like, wow, that's scary. <laughs> Because I'm like, The very hair in my head, he knows the number of it. Of course, when you're young, everything is literal. Okay, he knows I have 1,027. <laughs> But when we think, that's not really counting how many pieces of hair I have, but it's exactly knowing me in totality, knowing all my character defaults, knowing everything that I still need to improve, knowing all my mistakes from the past, knowing everything I promised in this incarnation I would do. You get like, wow, he knows a lot about me. And, uh, and, and that's when we say that the God is a loving mother and father. He knows us. And many times he understands that we are like little children. So we are adults, physically speaking, but like spiritually, many times we act like little children. But God sees us all as little children. So whenever someone is committing these horrible mistakes and, and they are hurting people, they are doing corruption, they are doing anything that... Uh, That, that you imagine, and we get so angry. We are like, how is that possible? And a lot of people even said, how God doesn't punish someone like that? First thing we have to understand that uh, this God, this God that punishes, this is the God from Moses' time. This is old. This is not the God we understand nowadays. God is really a good mother and father. And, uh, and I'm saying the good mother and father like from my time. So my mother and father, they were very tough parents. They were very strict. They, they wanted the things to be well done, to be right. And if they saw something wrong, they would just look at me like just the eyes of my mother. <sighs> My mother looked me in a side way, forget about it. I'm like, okay, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> but, you know, we think like, oh, but it's, your parents were terrible. Well, for nowadays, yeah, because nowadays everything's changing. Nowadays, there is no beaten up. Nowadays, parents have to talk, 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 talk. Sometimes it's exhausting. But we have to understand the spirits are evolving. So the spirits like me, for example, that I used to accept things in an easier way. My mother look at me, I'm like, oh, okay. I can look at my son, I can do anything. My son will look at me, what, what, what's up, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so you have nowadays to talk, to explain why something is not good, what will be the consequences, what will be the consequence for tomorrow, but what will be the consequences for 10 years. And even like this is not easy. But we also have to understand the spirits nowadays are much intelligent. They are more intelligent than us. And whenever someone is intelligent, they like to compete. They like to test. They like to drive you crazy. So we have to have patience. We have to have patience. We have to study with the good psychologists what's the best way to, to deal with this situation. Because the worst thing is just to ignore. I don't want to talk about. Or to try to behave like my parents in the past. Beaten up. Because it does not help. So society is evolving. The spirits are getting, the, the ones that are incarnating are much more intelligent. 
but it's a challenge for the parents because the parents they have to learn how to deal with this and every issue has to be addressed because when you try to put something on the side and just forget about uh, you're grounded i don't want to talk about it you are not resolving the issue you're just postponing the issue so it's still it's still a big problem let me see what uh, nora said yes oh, my mouse is not working where is my mouse oh here so nora said yes even as educators we speak to teenagers they understand when we speak to them my god nora being a teacher is not easy i congratulate you and then oh yeah i just had uh, become a teacher angie and believe me you will work patience daily i am sure you work patience daily because uh, you know i have a uh, one child i imagine taking care of a 20 or 30 <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, not uh, easy it's very very hard so let me see i have to control myself because i can get uh, on and on and on and then i never finish the text so we cannot measure god's glory around us but we can recognize the divine attributes of god through our love to our fellow man so this is a beautiful sentence let's let's understand we cannot measure god's glory around us but we can recognize the divine attributes of god through our love to our fellow man so when we talk about our love to our fellow man what is that <laughs> the best way to understand is our love for our children for example if you have a son a daughter that's the 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 best way of describing this pure love because it's different that if you love a man or a woman is is even different of your love for your mother and father because the the, the love for the little one it's it's like that the thing that little being depends on you totally especially when they are little babies they're little children or animals if you don't have a kid for example imagine a little dog that little dog depends on you all the time. If you die and he's locked in the house with you for a long time, he will die because he doesn't know how to, how to survive without you. So this is the, the, the God's love. We can understand the God's love when we start thinking like this. This is a way for us to start experimenting this love that is so immense that's hard for us to, to really understand. So as far as it goes, the definition of the New Testament, God is love, and he that abideth in love, abideth in God, and abide and God abideth in him. So as I said before, he that remains in love, he that remains in love, love remains in God, and God remains with him. So this, this is this is the thing so when we have this love we are able to understand god we are able to understand ourselves we are able to understand the others haven't you ever had that day that everything was so beautiful so perfect that you wanted to get out on the streets and hug everybody and kiss everybody and say ah oh, good morning because you're having such a wonderful day that you're feeling like, woo! Well, yes, I feel like this sometimes. I think because I'm really hyper and exaggerated. So everything is a little bit too bigger. But I had many days like this. I like, ah! And I feel so excited because life is so beautiful, so perfect. And yes, of course, we all have days that you wake up, you look in the mirror like, oh! <laughs> and then life is not that beautiful again and takes a long time takes a lot of coffee and uh, some lipstick to make you feel oh, okay i'm a little bit better <laughs> so let's go uh, ba -ba -ba. 
Okay, so it carries with it the promise that by living and practicing pure love, man will finally attain to the state of union with his maker forever. So whenever we, we are able to live in this state of uh, happiness, whenever we will be able not to be like we are nowadays, we are like happy, super unhappy, happy, super unhappy. Sometimes we are in the middle. So whenever we are able to remain steady, remain good, not super this or super that, we remain in the middle, we will finally be able how to keep this, this love and how to make one with God, how to understand a little bit of, uh, of God. So to finalize, uh, would we find God? Then we need to follow Jesus Christ, service with him in the real easement of life's problems. So the last sentence is the most beautiful one. Good things do not come to us by chance. Good things do not come to us by chance. The happiness and the peace in the soul's kingdom come from love's service. Love's service. When we find love in our heart, Jesus is there. So basically, this, uh, this last sentence summarizes the whole, the whole text. So the first thing, good things do not come to us by a chance. Remember, nothing ever happens by a chance. Good things or bad things, they don't happen by a chance. There is a purpose. There is a purpose for everything that's happening. We do not understand the purpose. We do not understand it. We just think like, oh, what a coincidence. For example, imagine a person that uh, won the lottery and then a few months later or a year later won the lottery again and you're like oh what a coincidence i cannot believe the same person won the lottery twice it's not a coincidence you know probably in the life in the previous lifetimes of this person something happened and she got a large portion of money and for whatever reason, she did not keep it. Someone stole from her. Or it was some kind of inheritance that she deserved. And someone did something and she did not receive it. Or whatever was the other reason. So in this lifetime, she probably was born without a family member that would be able to give the legitimate inheritance that she deserved. So if she didn't have it, so the good spirits, they plan everything. So, okay, so she deserves to receive this money that was legitimate, so we will find a way, and the way was the lottery. And maybe the first amount was not enough, so oh, well, well, we have to give to her again so she can complete the, the amount. This is just an example, but they are, so many things like for example i already spoke about this a few times divaldo franco the very famous medium from brazil he psychographic so many books he's he's amazing and he is 93 years old nowadays and he was explaining that a lot of people are dying of covid yes but if they are not dying because they are exposing themselves, so they are not pulling them, putting themselves at risk, if they end up going to a hospital, whatever, it was not their fault, but they got the disease and they could not survive, it was not a bad coincidence. It's because their time to go arrived. And maybe there is something that they had to go through this hard time. Because yes, it's a very hard time. It's a very hard time to all of us. The family members, they cannot be together. Uh, I have a friend who her father died uh, two weeks ago. She could not go to the wake. The family couldn't. The, the coffin was locked. They only could know 
the father was there, but nobody could see him. So this is very painful. It's very, very painful to everyone, painful for the family members and also for, for the spirit. But we have to understand there is no coincidence. So if he, he or she left at that time, it's because they needed to go. Their period of time to go arrived and there was something extra they had to go through in this difficult way. But uh, as we all know, nothing happens by a chance. Everything is well organized. And it's not that the things are set. The main things in our lives are set. But uh, even that we can change. Maybe in the spiritual realm, we plan to marry this person, to have these kids, to live in this country, and we end up changing everything. But uh, certain things were planned, so the spirits will find ways to help us to be able to achieve that. So the same thing uh, of the, the money with this woman. So she ended up not having a family that had money to give us the inheritance, but then they found a way to inspire her with the correct numbers to win the lottery. So a beautiful, a beautiful message. So this was the text to find God. So now we have five minutes for the gospel. Remember, when we start in two weeks, October 1st, we will study the gospel for 20 minutes but then will not be just me i will be with two other people so will be like a conversation it will be much more exciting because we will be three people reading and talking about it so it will be much more exciting so saul said it's not by chance we are here learning yes so exactly that's a good one it's not by a chance because we could be watching a soap opera or sleeping or watching the, the other series of Netflix, but we chose, we used well our free will to be talking about these spiritual teachings and uh, improving. We are always improving from it. So we are in the gospel chapter nine, item number eight obedience and resignation this is perfect for me obedience and resignation i need it so i will read a little bit and and comment so at all points jesus doctrines teaches obedience and resignation two very active companion virtues of meekness remember meekness we studied like a few weeks meekness is that person that's docile it's calm it's gentle not many people like this so although people erroneously confuses them with the negation of a sentiment and will so obedience is the consent of a reason resignation is the consent of a heart both are active forces because they carry the burden of the trials that insensate rebellion let's insensate rebellion let's drop so this is is very strong so obedience and resignation so people always confuse always make confusion that when someone is obedient and resignates like instead of rebellion they like okay so it's fine i have to go through it i accept it wow my goodness i talk so much so people instead of uh, being like that our society especially they always think like for example, social media, people fight in social media, especially the, the famous people, it's, it's really awful. They use social media all the time to attack each other, to, to send these horrible comments. It's very painful. So instead of being resignate and say, you know, this is a lie, I don't wanna talk about it, I will, I will let it go, time will answer or the person just uh, try to, to to do something to more positive to prove 
that uh, whatever he, he or she is being accused is a lie. But no, people have this thing. They were attacked. They have to attack back. And then you don't become different. You are exactly the same thing. You are throwing darts. And this is really not resignation. So resignation is something that is hard. And we have to learn how to, to be able to develop it. It's very close to, to patience, too. So this obedience, resignation, patience, my God, I need all of them. I'm sure we all need, but some people need even more. <laughs> so the coward cannot be resigned, just as the proud and selfish person cannot be obedient. That's true. Jesus was the incarnation of these virtues, scorned by the materialistic antiquity. So imagine, imagine if nowadays we are so evolved in technology, there are so many things, there are so many improvements in every single sense, even in the law, because there are a lot of laws that protect the citizens. In the time of Jesus, there was almost nothing. The law was of the stronger. That's why when Jesus come telling that we have to, to forgive, that we need to give the other side of the cheek if someone has left you here, people couldn't believe. People were in disbelief. They're like, this man's crazy. Are you kidding me? We, we need, that's why the Jews misunderstood Jesus. They thought that Jesus was going to be really that... Uh, that strong savior that was going to come with an army, killing everybody, destroying everything, and giving the power to the Jews. But no, that was not his message. His message was really saying he, his kingdom was not of that uh, planet, that earth, that soil. His kingdom was from another era another location his kingdom was the spiritual kingdom and he really came there to teach us to learn with his examples his examples of extreme meekness extremely docile calm peaceful so this is how we have to be one day one, one day we will be able to be like jesus we are still far from it but one day we'll be like this so just to finalize there is a beautiful passage. He also says, the virtue of your generation is intellectual activity. Its vice is moral indifference. So this book, this book, imagine this book was written in the 1800s, in the 1800s, and this was written. And uh, it's still nowadays the same thing. Our virtue is the intellectual activity that's evolving faster and faster. But the morality is still pending, still weak. So the moral indifference is our problem. So to finalize here, blessed are they who are meek, for they will lend a willing here to our teachings. And this was Lazar, the spirit of Lazar, in uh, Paris, 1863, when he sent this message. Uh, Lazar was a French mathematician. He, like a, people from the 1800s, they studied so many, so many things. So he was a mathematician, but he was also a philosopher. And I will post on our uh, Facebook page uh, some uh, information about the spirit of Lazar. So my friends, thank you so much. We are going to have now our final prayer with our friend Emanuele here. You can't hear me? I think only you can't hear me because everybody's hearing. What happened? I, I can hear you, but I can. I can hear you. So you, you can, can hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. I can't hear you because I can't hear you. I'm like. So do, do the prayer, you. Okay, so we're going to start. Okay. 
<laughs> All right. Um, so I ask everyone to close your eyes, take a deep breath. Dear Almighty God, dear beloved Jesus and our spiritual friends, thank you for this beautiful teaching tonight. Thank you for allowing us to be here, for understanding your words, and also for understanding that we can love one another always. And only like that, we will be happy. Please enlighten us to the point that we can reach spiritual maturity and understand that we cannot give hate back. Only with love, only giving love to even those who inspire us to be selfish, to be um, angry, to be impatient. But let us understand that with the patience, with all the answers within us, we can find and we can reach the love that Jesus had showed us. Please protect us. Protect all the people in Florida, in New York, in Brazil, all around the globe. And let us pray, pray and be enlightened for all the love, for the benevolence that came with the Jesus teachings. So be it. So be it. That was beautiful. Very good. So my friends, uh, Emanuele, Emanuele can't, she can't hear us, but uh, the prayer was very good. And I want to thank all of you for being with us. Thank you so much. I hope to be able to see you all next Thursday and uh, take a look at our YouTube channel, Mia Inner Light. Thank you. God bless you all. See you next week. Thank you, Emanuele. <laughs>